This year, we'll be reading nonfiction articles once a week in an activity called Article of the Week. In, instead of just reading the article and talking about it, we're going to be practicing a strategy called close reading. Close reading is used to help you get deeper into the meaning of nonfiction texts. You're going to find out not only what the words say, but what they mean, mean to you and mean to the world at large. When you begin close reading, we're first going to read the draft all the way through, but read with a pencil in your hand. You're going to be noting things you don't understand, you'll be noting things that are interesting, and you're going to be making comments and questions that help you really get to the heart of what the story or article is about. Once you get your article, it's important to break it into small pieces. This is called chunking. This first article that we were going to be working on together called The Silent Army, we're going to break it into six chunks. You'll notice I've highlighted in yellow my first big chunk. We're going to be looking at each chunk as a separate piece of information to figure out what's important, what it's about, questions that we have, inferences that we can make, perhaps vocabulary that we don't understand. And by doing it chunk by chunk by chunk, we're going to do the, the little text, big text format all together. By figuring out the little pieces, hopefully the big piece will come together. It's really important in informational text to understand words that are either in bold print, italics, underlined. If the author thinks it's important enough to highlight in that way, it's important enough for you to know. In the first chunk of The Silent Army, you'll notice that I've circled in yellow a word that's in italics, terracotta. Normally I'd go to a dictionary, but in this case, the word terracotta is defined in, in the actual sentence, and it says, they are made of a red clay called terracotta. I don't need a dictionary. The sentence tells me what it is. The second thing I circled was a Chinese name. And I, if I don't know how to pronounce it, that's okay. Qin Shi Huang Di. Well, again, it looks like something I should know. It's not in the dictionary, but if I go back into my sentence, it's obviously the, the name of a person, and in this case, that name is the name of the first emperor of China. So I've identified two terms, two phrases that I didn't know that I think are probably going to be very important to this reading. The next task is to really figure out, all right, what is this piece of, piece of reading about? I'm going to highlight, if I have a highlighter, or underline the important or interesting facts and ideas. Typically, when I'm looking for the facts, I want to know what the article is actually saying. I'm looking for the who, the what, the where, the when, the why, the how, if those are available. So in this particular chunk, the when, 1974, where, a place called Xi'an in southwest of Beijing, um, who, farmers digging a well, and what, well, they uncovered a fragment, fragment of pottery that looked like the head of a sculpture. Then I read down farther, there's another who. Archaeologists were involved. What did they do? They excavated the farmer's well, and they found many more statues. They found a whole army. Again, we're going to go back to the where. Where was it? Well, it was a, it was a mile from a main tomb of this emperor that I found out about again. And I've got another when. I found out that this particular guy lived in the years 259 B.C. to 210 B.C. So these sculptures have been there a really, really long time. And again, the where, it's part of a tomb. So I've by just highlighting, I now know who it's about, what it's about, where it took place, when it took place, and maybe some of the, you know, how did they find it, or, or some of those other little factual details. Right now, I'm just looking at the key facts. Once I've identified the facts, now I really want to think about what this means. So that's when I get into making an inference or taking the facts that I have and making a judgment about what it might mean to me. And I also want to think about some questions that I still have based on what I read. And I understand my penmanship here is not great, but when you're working with a larger iPad, it'll be a little bit better. As I read chunk one, it said there were 8,000 sculptural statues of soldiers found near this tomb. Well, I can infer, based on that fact, that this emperor must have been very powerful, perhaps very wealthy, maybe very well regarded, but that's an inference because the article didn't say that. But I think that's important to talk about because why else would this emperor have this giant clay army buried in his tomb? Also, as I was reading, I had some questions that came to my mind. You've got these poor Chinese farmers digging a well. They find these pottery statues. So what happened to them? What happened to their land? It said the, the archaeologists 
excavated 200,000 square feet of land looking for more and more of the silent army. So what happened to these poor farmers? This article may not tell me, but at least I'm now digging deeper. I'm thinking about the consequences of finding this kind of discovery. The farmers probably are going to lose their land. That may not be the most important part of the article, but now I'm digging deeper into what this means to the people of China. The last step in doing a close reading is when you finish annotating that first chunk. Think about, all right, what is that chunk about? Just that one small chunk. What's the topic of that chunk? And with that topic, you're going to write what's called a thesis statement. A thesis statement is identifying the topic, giving your opinion of it with a reason. So when I thought about it, well, my topic of that first chunk is the discovery of the silent army. What's my opinion of it? Well, it's exciting. So that's my opinion. And what's my reason that it's exciting? Well, I think it's because it told a whole new story of China's past. So my thesis statement will kind of sums up everything I learned in that first chunk. The discovery of the silent army was exciting because it told a new story of China's past. So by following these simple steps and going back and digging deeper into the text, you can make more meaning. And that's why it's called close reading. And we'll be doing these once a month, so good luck.